Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is said to have many different revelations as well as twists and turns in this story by director J.J. Abrams. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. So what's really exciting about Episode 9 is that we do know that this movie is going to be used as a film that's going to make us view the past two Star Wars movies in a different light as well as the entire sequel trilogy and the Skywalker saga. And what's really great about this is that this could either, you know, give us a better idea of where some of the sequel trilogy characters have been and fill in some of the gaps in between the originals and the sequels. Now these past couple of weeks or so we've been learning a whole lot more about this film and when it all comes down to one of the set leaks this is where things begin to get very exciting for episode 9. Now specifically it's described that one of the scenes that were shot during the month of October of 2018 involved a scene that was shot over at Cardington which was said to be a scene for one of the flashbacks involving a younger Snoke that also involves Leia in some form of political conference room. The scene is said to be a part of the origins of the First Order where one of the scenes involves Snoke in a black robe wearing his first obsidian ring. It's said that in the sequence Snoke has far less injuries and even has blonde hair that is very fine and thin on his head. One of the costume designs for Snoke was described to be a white cloak with black stripes also with a gold design pattern running down the back where the outfit was dubbed as Governor Ravana Snoke 44-NRPF outfit. Now it's described that part of the origins of the First Order that will be applied to the film will also be told in Episode 9 that will establish how Snoke has gone through multiple identities throughout his life to cover his tracks to creating a new order that would eventually succeed the Empire. It's also said that there was also a black outfit that was used on set for Snoke in the form of a robe, which would indicate that they shot two versions of the scene, or there will be two flashbacks involving this specific period of time. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, we have actually gone over a number of different hints and or indicators before in the past that Snoke has a political background. And this most certainly does tie directly into all of that. Now, the one thing about this is that him being a governor, specifically Governor Ravana Snoke, R-A-V-A-N-A, -A, followed by the name of Snoke, it's basically going to establish in episode nine that Snoke has gone through multiple identities in order to cover his tracks to creating a new order that would eventually top the Empire itself, which would eventually become the First Order. So what I find very intriguing about Episode 9 is that we will be learning more about the origins of the First Order, as well as a little bit of Snoke's backstory, and I think that there is no coincidence here that we are getting that Snoke comic this September that's going to explain a little bit about Snoke's life before the events of The Force Awakens, you know, during his training with Kylo Ren, as well as other secrets of that character that takes place before The Force Awakens. So it shall be very interesting to see, and I don't think it's a coincidence that they're dropping it in late 2019, just a couple of months before the release of Episode 9. Now, as far as Snoke goes, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is by far one of the most mysterious characters in the Skywalker saga. He's right up there with Darth Plagueis, in my opinion, because we know little to nothing about his background, we know little to nothing about what he really is, per se, we don't even know what species he actually is in Star Wars, so that's another thing. So, looking forward to Episode 9, we will be getting some answers to all of this as well in the episode 9 visual dictionary which is also going to really you know kind of just give us better ideas of certain pieces of the backstories of other characters like Kylo, Rey, Snoke, Luke, Leia, Lando, the list goes on. So I want to go over the meaning of the name. Now I'm not quite sure what the meaning of Ravana really is. It's spelled R-A-V-A-N-A, -A, Ravana Snoke. Now we do know that initially he was called Evandor Snoke and among other names as well under the, under the title of being governor and or senator giving us that idea, of course, that he is indeed coming from a political background. And it does make sense now, because we do know that he is in or around 800 years old, as we actually went over a couple of days ago, that he's around 800 years old to be exact, and he was born from the beyond itself. So that's exactly why Snoke is a very powerful character. Now, looking past episode 9, we do know that J.J. Abrams has a lot of plans in this film to interconnect it with the new Star Wars trilogy. Either the new trilogy, you know, being based in the past or whatever it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of Easter eggs and a lot of callbacks 
to, of course, the new Star Wars trilogy, even though it's not out yet. So we're going to see these connections once the David Benioff and D.B. Weiss films drop in the early 2020s, which we can then look back at The Rise of Skywalker and say, oh, that's an Easter egg to this movie, and that's an Easter egg to this movie. That's going to be a very smart move by J.J., and I have no doubt that a lot of that's going to have to do with Snoke, given that he is nearly a thousand years old. So, looking past all of this, guys, I'm very excited to see exactly what it's going to look like on the big screen, what it's all going to really, you know, be like in the story itself, how it's going to be executed by director J.J. Abrams, and I would love to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.